All right, just a little bit of truck progress here. I've got the front suspension all back together for the most part. Um, axle is installed right here. Um, new U-bolts uh, had showed up from a company up in New York that I had special order. Um, the ones from LMC are just too long and uh, there was no way I could tighten them up. Um, put the shocks in and I got the spindles installed with the new kingpins. Those things are freaking awesome. Uh, when I pulled the old kingpin, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. Before I pulled the kingpin, I was I was playing around with the spindle, and of course there was a little bit of slop. And you know, on a 50-year-old truck, I'm pretty sure that had never been changed. So right now, I've got really, really tight kingpins in there. I had them uh, reamed out by a machinist, and uh, they're working awesome. So I greased them up before. I'm going to put it on the ground just to make sure that that bearing has some grease. Um, bearing the bearing does have a top and bottom. Um, it is marked on it top so anyway um, it's uh, it's all installed right now so these are feeling pretty good uh, got the uh, shocks installed as well it's just a little grease so got a little crazy with the grease gun um, new Monroe shocks put those installed too I didn't torque them down to what the book had said what I ended up doing was just going to the point where the uh, the rubber boot here was exceeding the um, just about to the point where it got to the edge of the washer. So anyway, that that's installed. Um, I think to tomorrow, my plan is to put the uh, the tie rod items back on. All right, I'll bring you back. All right, today I didn't get as far as I really wanted to. Um, I had hoped to get the uh, front hubs um, back on and get the uh, the truck back down on its front wheels. But I didn't really get that far. Um, I started uh, looking up at some of the drawings and some of the more technical paperwork that I have for the truck and I noticed that I put something in backwards so I had to go and spend about an hour fixing that. Then I went on a wild goose chase for some um, cotter pins for the spindle nuts on the back side. And because uh, the ones I bought from Dennis Carpenter apparently are too big for the for the castle nuts and for the uh, A&N type bolt that I was using that came with the truck. So anyway, I'll show you what I've done here. Okay, the front suspension is just about put back together. Um, I still have to torque some stuff down, have to touch up just a little bit of spray paint. Um, what I got going on right now is I got the uh, the new kingpins put in yesterday. Those were. Uh, pretty tough on one side but actually turned out pretty good um, they they work like a charm right now uh, back and plate is on and the spindle um, steering arms are on so what I'm gonna have to do is these uh, bolts that are going through here I'm gonna have to find the torques back on so what I got going on right now is this back here uh, it's a little messy because of the grease but this one connects up to the drag link, which is going to go to where the steering box was right here. Um, and then that one over there, over there, right over there, sticking out the bottom. Uh, that one attaches to the tight rod adjusting sleeve. So anyway, what I had to do was this axle. I apparently had flip-flop the other way when I installed this. And how I could tell was by the kingpin lock bolt right here um yesterday i don't know if i'm going to include this or not but yesterday when i put this all together um i had the axle like this part of the axle it's now on the driver's side over on the passenger side and that uh, that nut was sticking forward so i didn't you know it didn't look right because of the uh the previous pictures i'd had and also looking at all the books and everything so i, I this is before I put all this on, but I, I dropped the axle back, I took the uh, shocks off, and uh, flipped flipped the axle um, back the other direction, and retorqued the uh, the U-bolts, and those things worked like a charm. Um, I didn't have any trouble putting it back on, and I made sure to put the, uh, the little shins that were originally here um, back um, to the correct side that I originally had them on. Um, why I did that is because it, it's really hard to see right now, but there is a slight bend in the axle. So I'm assuming that at some point in its life, it had the camber adjusted, and to adjust the straight axle, you have to put a hydraulic jack on it and a special arm. So 
Anyway, that's why I moved it back, just to be sure that uh, that I was doing this correct. Alright, another quick quick update. Um, since it got dark outside, I, uh, I came in the garage and I started working on the hubs. Um, got all of the, the bearings packed, race is set, oil, um, the grease seal is set, and that one is ready to go in, so we're not going to put these on the, uh, on the spindle. Let's take that, uh, race, or I'm sorry, the bearing out of the race, put the hub on, and then set this up. So I'm just, uh, waiting for daylight. Um, also, I set up my, uh, inner set up my tie rod adjusting sleeve um it's just kind of basically set up right now um new tie rods ready to go on i had to call a uh like a junkyard place down in north carolina for this piece here so since mine was really bent um remember greasies because there are no grease in those um another thing that i did this week was insulate my garage door um back in february it got down to you know, negative temperatures outside and it, and it felt just about as cold in here so I went to Lowe's and just got this one inch thick um, Perma R foam um, it already made a huge difference and I, five degrees is really not a huge difference but five degrees inside the garage in about an hour um, after I put this up it raised about five degrees so I'm happy with it and uh Let's just hopefully I'll keep all the flames away from that thing. Um, I can still open the garage door, no problem. Uh, the rest of the walls are insulated. Um, that garage door was not. And my my, my windows here, um, they're probably original to the house when that was built in the 60s. And then when the guy built the garage, he just you know probably recycled them. So half of the window panes are broken. I put up a um, like a mylar material on these windows to reflect uh, from the outside during the daylight you can't look in and if the lights off in here from outside you have a hard time looking in so that's just a little bit of uh, I don't know paranoia for looking around my shop um, I got a lot of stuff and you know it's not expensive but I've got a lot of stuff so you know keep the little meth heads away from my house um status on the engines i talked to a machinist guy over in wildwood and i'm gonna go ahead and bring him this engine um in, in pieces obviously over the next couple weeks uh gonna take him the block to crank the head all the valves um yeah he's gonna take a look at it he's gonna you know hot tip it for me um check everything out and then this one i'm not sure what i'm going to do with it but uh i don't really want to build this one i mean after looking at it i haven't even dropped the pan but i kind of want to see what this one's up to so that's uh that's what i'm going to do anyway i'm i'm heading out i'm going to go in the house so you guys have a good one thanks for watching